Funding for Love to Paint with Mimi was provided by Agnes Gund. Utrecht Art Supplies, celebrating 60 years. And by Kelly and Robert Day. Additional funding was provided by the following. Hi, I'm Mimi. Today I'm going to try my hand at printmaking and then I'm going to paint a colorful tropical scene from the Bahamas. Grab your brushes and let's get started. Ready, set, go. Here we go. Paint on paper. This is what creation is about. Woo, isn't that beautiful? This is the beach. Look at that green against that yellow. I mean, it just sings. We're dancing with this color. It's going across the page. I'm a shape maker. That's what artists do. They make shapes, they create color, they do all these incredible things. Oh, I love to paint. You know, it's really important as artists that we keep expanding and trying new things. So with this in mind, I joined a group of young artists and tried printmaking for the very first time. Let's take a look and see what happened. We started our adventure with a quick demonstration of printmaking from art teacher Rebecca Cook. All right, let me come back. Wow, all that's right. That's great. Once our plates were inked up, we were ready to begin. So this is a very easy, affordable way to do printmaking. And there is a sheet of masonite under here, and then there is a piece of cardboard, and we cut out a hole in the middle of the cardboard, like a frame or a mat, and then into that we put a piece of plexiglass, and on the plexiglass we put printer's ink. And then we lay down the sheet of paper, and whatever marks we make on this sheet are going to pick up the ink on the plexiglass plate. So if one wants to see the mark, they would draw with a pencil or a pen. If you want to have a big surprise, you just make a mark with something that doesn't have lead in it. You can use any object to draw with. We use wooden spoons, brushes, pencils, even rocks. We all had so much fun being outdoors and trying something completely new. Oh, cool. Oh, it's great. Okay, we just keep going. And remember, whenever you try something for the first time, it's about the journey, not the result. And the result will come with practice. I hope you enjoyed that. Now let's get started. Today we're going to be painting an acrylic in the Bahamas. And we're painting on an 18 by 24 stretched canvas. And the colors we're going to be using today are burnt umber. And the blue is ultramarine blue, cerulean blue, cambium red light, yellow okra, cambium yellow and white. And the brushes we're using today, we're using the two inch flat. And this is a number 12 flat. That's another number 12 flat. And we've got a little round brush here, which we love our little round brush. Our little rigger for number four rigger and our palette knife and we're going to be using the palette knife today which is the first time we've used this and it's a wonderful little brush and it's a brand new tool for me. So we put the brushes over there we're going to start right off thinking about the composition and so I'm going to know that we're using the rule of thirds again which I use over and over again 
which will mean that the water is about going through a third right there. So let's just make a little line here. And then we're going to have a building, which is a wonderful little house that was down there in the Caribbean. And we're just going to draw a little outline of this, very casual. But just you can let me know exactly where this is happening, just like that. And that's all I really need. We're going to have, we have a stone wall down here, and we'll fill that in. But this gives me enough to see what I'm, it's gonna, where I'm starting. So we're going to start with the sky, because I like to start far away and work up. And it's a beautiful morning. It's early morning sunrise. And we're going to just put a couple little clouds in here. That's so beautiful, that color. And we're going to put a little bit of yellow ochre in there just to make it a very, you know, just to vary it a bit. As artists, we like to vary the color a bit. We don't want it all one color. Now, some artists, if they were painting modern, might want to do that. But for what I'm doing, in when you're painting landscape, there's color in everything. When you really, really super look hard, you're going to see colors you've never seen before. You're going to notice pieces of bark. You're going to know so many things. And now what we're going to do is we're going to put a little cloud up in here. It's kind of a pink cloud, a little bit darker than that cloud there. We're going to put a little white in there. And then we're going to start off with our blue, putting the blue in the sky. It's just a beautiful, beautiful morning. And you know, it's fun to have, you think about the Impressionists. And if you really check out Monet's skies, you will notice that he's got yellow and blue and green and purple and all these different colors that make the painting interesting. And of course, there are all these colors. And I, you know something else? People see color differently. I'm convinced of that. I think people see blues differently. I see, know that I have a friend that sees color the way I don't see it. She looks at out on the ocean, she says, look at that extraordinary color. So it's helped me to think and train my eye to be more adventuresome. Now, I'm going to put a little ultramarine in here. That's a little bit different color. And you know, if we mix a tiny bit of yellow in here, it's going to shift the color again. And not much, but just a little. And you're going to see it's a little dark. So we just keep going here, and I'm just going to keep going in, and I'm going right over the house because I have a sense of where it is, and I want to make the sky go behind the house. And then we're going to have the little down here. We're going to have a little bit more sky, and of course, this is further in the distance, so it's going to get a little bit more muted because as you go more in the distance, there's more atmosphere there, so it gets more muted. And then I'm going to put a tiny bit darker up in here. And now we want to kind of get on with this painting. And I think right here, though, I just want to have a little something different there. And just so it's not pink going right off the edge. Now I've got to be careful because, you know, as I say, you start to tickle the painting. Tickle the painting means you just keep going at it, keep diddling, diddling. And it's important in the beginning to get your big spaces in as quickly as you can. And now what we're going to do is we're going to have the ocean going here. And you know, here's my little T-square, which is, just makes things so easy for me. And so we're just going to go in with the T-square and make the water on the horizon like this. That's our horizon line. And it's really fun making the water because no matter what you seem to do, it turns out right. You just make these lines going across, and they could be little waves out there. Now we're going to change the color a bit, put a little tiny bit of yellow in there, because the water turns green, actually, as it gets closer in the Caribbean. So we're going to do that and have that coming down here. Then what we want to do is we're going to have coming into the shore, so I'm going to clean my brush off a bit. And we know sand is either yellow or yellow okra. Not always. You know, nothing is a definite rule because if, the, if it was dark at night and the shadows were dark, 
it could be, the sand could be dark, but at this time of day, we're having it look yellow. And then we're gonna just carry it right down here like this. And you know, painting is kind of like dancing. And it, you just let the brush do what it wants to do sometimes, but you have a sense of, you know, I want water and we know water is flat. So we're gonna take the brush across flat. Sometimes the trees grow up, so we have the brush streaks going up. And you try and imitate nature with your brush strokes. And now we have coming down here, a little bit of green. We're gonna put a little green in here. And there might be a little grass here. We want it going straight over there. And what we're gonna be thinking about now is there's going to be a stone wall here, not a stone wall, I think it's actually made out of um, plaster or something like that. But we're gonna have a wall in the foreground and this goes over here. We're just kind of blocking in things right now. Okay, now we wanna put that building in there. We're gonna have this going down here. I'm thinking about a lot of things at once. Um, it's fun to work the whole painting. And I know there's gonna be a little space here between this wall, so I'm gonna put that in there now. Now, let's go up and see as we make this building where, how wet it is, and it's still kind of wet. So I'm just gonna take it out like that. And this was a wonderful red roof, fabulous red roof. So we're gonna put the red roof in it. Maybe what I'm gonna do is go in with this and just make the top of the red roof. So I think it was about up there. We're just gonna take it across like this. And then we're gonna take it down like that. Oh, look how beautiful that is. It, you know, paint is just so amazing. Look at that. I mean, it's so exciting to me to see what happens because I never know what's quite gonna happen. And we're gonna bring it down a little bit further. And then we're gonna have the bottom part of the building was, oh, I think what we ought to do first before we get into that is bring this over here and we're gonna have this as the bottom part of the building coming down like that. And you know what I'm seeing is this and that, this and that are too much the same color. So I think what I'm gonna do is maybe just make this a little brown in here. But let's, and then we'll continue on with this. Whoops. And we don't really need this anymore, this T-square. So we're gonna take this across here. Maybe put a little white in there. And I'll tell you what we need to do. We need to continue that red roof down here. We go back into the red, go down here like this. And we know that underneath the roof where the roof and the building meet, it's gonna be dark. And that, because there's, you know, the building goes behind the roof. So right up in there, it's gonna be dark, but I'm not gonna put that in quite yet because I've got a, not, a fairly clean brush. Now, I'll tell you what else there was going on with this. There was another little roof that was up here, like this. Might have even been a little higher, so let's put that in there, like this. And we had, on this side, we're having the lights coming from this direction here, so this would be dark coming down here. We make this dark here. And we need a little darker, but the paint is kind of thick there. And actually with this particular building, we had, it was kind of white in the front. So let's see if we can make this. Yeah, that's gonna work. That's working fine, white there. And you know, the building goes beyond here. And we have a little bit of dark under here. 
right there like that. We have a window here and a window here. We're going to change the color a bit and we're going to make a little door here. And what we want to do now is we want to put in some of the foliage. So we go back to our blue, our ultramarine, go into our yellow, and we start working in some green here. A little dark, so we add a little white to it. But it, actually, this green went in front of the building there. And we're going to add a little yellow ochre and maybe put a little cerulean in there. And there are actually bushes in front of this. And we could even try using the palette knife in a minute in there. Now, what we want to do here is continue this down here. And let's see what's going on here. We want to make this shape a little bit more interesting here. That goes up, it's all this green, and of course underneath it's going to be a touch darker. Now, we're going to use, we have a wall going on here. So, just because I want to make sure that it's kind of flat, I'm going to hold this here and put my stone wall, it isn't a stone wall, the wall here. And let's use a brush that's clean. And we're going to go like this. And that's going to go like that. And then over here as well, we have the opening in the wall. We have that going down like that. Now we have a little opening there, which is great. And it's interesting because right here, is going to be, well, I think what we ought to do is have a little darker brown here. This paint is going on so beautifully today. Now, you know, we're seeing part of the wall, so we're going to have it going like this. And we want this to be darker. And so we're going like this. And then here is where the bottom of the wall, and then down here would be a little darker. Because the top of the wall is reflecting the light from up top, so it would be lighter up there. Now, all down here, we are going to have the wall. And this is going to go like this. Let's have a little brown. We don't really care what the color is. We just want to say wall. Now. Now we're going to have, we're going to bring the palette knife into play here. I think what I want to do is, now this palette knife is a new tool for me. So we've got some wonderful green foliage growing here. And we're thinking about composition. And then what we're going to do is, we're going to have dark here. And we're thinking about darks and lights. And I remember I talked about squinting. When you're looking at something, you want to squint and see shapes, large shapes. And so this is getting to be a large shape, and this is a large shape, and we want these darks in here. And also at the bottom here, we want some large shapes here. And I'm not thinking about each little tiny piece of grass or every little palm tree or every little flowering shrub. I'm thinking about, ooh, look at that. Let's have it all block in as a color. Now, let's see what, oh, I know what we need to do. I'm always kind of looking everywhere. Um, we want to think about the, the darks and the lights. And I want the darks on the outside, and then I want some lights in the middle. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some white, and we're going to guide the eye in right here, right here. Guide the eye in. 
And of course, you know, where you have your lightest lights and your darkest darks or where your eye's going to go. So I'm going to make it on this side of the wall, it's going to be a bit darker because I don't want our eye falling out of the painting. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to have these wonderful little shrubs. Now I'm using the palette life and on the other side of this building, we're going to have some little green or blue bush right here. And you can see I haven't, I'm not too familiar with this, but I'm experimenting and I like the idea of doing something different. And we'll have a little yellow and we'll have the yellow going up that way. And I think what would be really nice actually would be to take a little blue here and just try experimenting. Let's see what, if we can make a wave with that. Yep, we're making a little wave. And then on this side, right here, this is where you come in. There's a little beach there. Now we're going to go ahead. It's fun using a new tool. And we have a wonderful palm tree here. And it goes up like this, it's going up, and it's going to be darker on this side and lighter on that side. And I really think that right here we need to have this whole thing darker, but it's a little bit on the wet side, as you can see. And we want to dance with a brush. And we have some green going out here. And we have this, this, look at that. I mean, isn't that incredible? Doesn't that say palm tree? And it was one simple stroke. And there's another one. And here's another one. And it's just taking the brush and working it pretty fast. Now what we want to do is we want to have these big palm fronds coming down. So I'm deciding on, I'm going to have a huge palm frond coming down here, way down, and another one coming down here, way over, and one more over here. Now, what we're going to do here is they're, they're awfully similar in that they're the spacing, which is I don't really like, but I'm not going to change it at this point, is I'm going to go back over and just have a feeling of these palm fronds, and then I'm going to go back in and make them some of them more individualized, but right now I'm massing in some color here. Isn't this incredible? I mean, to me, to be able to do something like this is a miracle, really. It feels like a miracle to be able to say palm fronds and say, you know, there are hundreds of palm fronds, but we don't need hundreds of palm fronds. All we need to say is palm frond and have people know it's a palm frond. We are not trying to create reality. This is an illusion. Art is an illusion. We're taking the three-dimensional world and making it into a two-dimensional world. And I think most people would realize that that's a palm frond. Now, on the other side, we have another tree and more palm fronds. So we're going to go up from here. And I'm kind of thinking about where is this, and I'm thinking, oh goodness, that's getting kind of close, so let's make it go over there. I don't want it to be exactly like this one, and it's getting to be exactly like that one. We don't want that. I want it to be different. Because we're creators and we're shape makers, and I don't have to do exactly what I saw. Okay, are you ready? Now we're going to go and do this and this. And it's, and that, woo, look at that red. Now that wasn't what I expected, but I kind of like it just because it's fun. And I think we need a little yellow in here. Now I've got to be careful that I don't overdo this thing. And that seems a little bright to me. Now what we want to do here is we want to just quickly go in here with a wonderful rigger brush and 
just say palm frond. And then I want to quickly put some figures in here. And I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, am I, am I there? This is what I want. I want a little more delineation here, a little more. And you know, the palm fronds go both ways over. And then I think what we could use here is a couple of little figures. I think they would really add. Um, and let's see how we're going to do this. Actually, I see something you might not have noticed, but this needs to go to the back all the way out there. And we're going to take two figures here. We're going to have one right here, maybe right there. And you never know quite how this is going to work out. But you just hope for the best. And you work with what you get. That's the important thing. You may not, you just, in a matter of fact, I don't even have a preconceived idea of how I want these figures. But we're going to have another little figure here. And we're going to put little heads on them. Boom. Boom. Maybe they're, this one might be holding something. This one's doing something else. But that says figure, then we take and go, you know why we put the shadow across? We, it grounds these figures. So here we go, ground, there we're grounding the figures. And I think we, I just one last quick thing. I don't like this color, so I'm taking that out. So I think that is about it for today. And it was an exciting painting. I was right back in the Bahamas. So I hope you joined the, came to the Bahamas with me and had a good time. And now I'm going to sign my name. And I think I'll sign it right here. And this brush, it almost looks like Chinese painting, so voila. So that's the painting for today. And I hope you like being in the Bahamas with me. It was an exciting painting for me to do. So pick up a brush, do something creative. You will be so happy for it. And so will I. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. For more inspiration and to order DVDs, please visit MimiSamus.com. Funding for Love to Paint with Mimi was provided by Agnes Gund. Utrecht Art Supplies, celebrating 60 years. And by Kelly and Robert Day. Additional funding was provided by the following.